Hi, everybody. I'm going to be doing the Snowdrop Satchel today by Blue Kala. Blue Kala? I'm not sure how you say it. I'll put a link below um, for the pattern if you need to buy it. But I've prepped all the pieces pretty well. I'm going to try and make this run as smooth as possible. And I'm going to follow the pattern as close as I can. So it'll be easy to follow along if that's what you're going to do. Um, so the first thing it has you do is get your zipper pieces ready. Your... Um, for a recessed zipper. So I've got all of those pieces ready. It wants you to fold them down a fourth of an inch right there. So I've done that for all of these pieces. I didn't do this piece yet. So all I did was I put tape on each end and my tape's about a fourth inch wide too. So it makes it easy for folding it down. Oh shoot. Sorry about that. Okay, so I'm just gonna fold those down. Just like that. So you do that on all four pieces, just so you don't have raw edges. And then for the zipper, how you prep the zipper is you need to fold down um, one end of it like that. So I already did it, but what I did was, so that's my zipper. All I did was I took it down like this, right there. So it's kinda, sorry, let me get that a little bit better there. About right there. And then I just sewed right along there. So it folds down nicely. And so when you have it both sides, like that. So you're gonna sew that down. And I did my zipper a little longer than the pattern says just because, hi Julie, Julia, hi Julia. Thanks for joining. Um, I did my zipper just a little bit longer cause I like to have a little extra there. And I made sure and sewed my zipper shut on this end. I'm gonna put um, a zipper stop on it later. All right, so, oh, and we need to trim this down. I'm gonna trim my zipper so it's flush. So I don't have little wings, little extra zipper there. And I'm just gonna use a lighter to seal it so it doesn't um, fray. Okay. So you go about a fourth inch from the end here. Zipper to the left side. And I've got my top panel on here. And I'm just gonna clip that down. And I'm going to go ahead and just put my top piece on as well. Because I don't think it'll move much. Just make sure you line them up pretty well. Make a little zipper sandwich. Just like that. And we're gonna sew along there. I usually can put it in about a fourth of an inch in when I'm doing a zipper. Yeah. 
Glad you're doing the snowdrop. Yeah, I'm excited. This is actually my first time doing the snowdrop and I've had a couple people ask to see it um, being made. So I'm excited to do it too. Thanks for joining, Gloria. Okay, so got that done on one side and I'm gonna top stitch that. And I'm just finger pressing because I'm using vinyl and waterproof canvas, so I don't wanna put heat on that. And get it as even as I can here. Okay. And we'll top stitch that all in. Doing recessed zippers used to scare me, but they're so simple once you figure out how it's all put together. All right. I don't want to tear my vinyl here. I'm really careful about that. Okay. So I've got my first side right there. That looks good. And I'm gonna work on my other one here. <clears throat> so I'll just do the same thing. Actually, I'm gonna flip it over do it this way. My biggest thing is getting them lined up right. Make sure you're pinning in the right spot here. Zip my zipper back up a little bit. That looks good. Beautiful. Okay, and then take your lining piece and place it on top. Okay. Sew that on. top stitch that. Okay. 
All right. Zipper done and out of the way. I'm going to go ahead and just um, seal up this raw edge here. So it makes it easier for when I'm putting it all together. Just a base stitch really close to the edge. Like I said, I'm going to try and follow um, the steps in the pattern pretty close. So I'll just go from one to the next. All right. So that's our zipper all done. Oh, and we need a clipper center. So we'll fold it in half. And I'll just put a tiny little clip where my center is so it makes it easier when I'm putting it all together onto the body. Done. Next. Okay, next we're doing all the, the strap connectors. And I have kind of prepped a lot of mine to make it go a little bit quicker here. And, oops. There we go. And all my D-rings. Okay. So I have already prepped all of these ones. I'll show you how I did that though. That's what it's gonna look like when we're all done to put it on our bag. I am not going to stitch it before I put it on the bag. I'm gonna, I'm gonna tape it on the bag first and then I'm just gonna do like a U stitch all the way up and down onto the bag. So here's our piece for our strap connector. Put some tape on the middle there, and you're just gonna fold the edges in. Pretty basic. I did learn that the tape won't hold overnight. I did all these last night and came back in here this morning and they all popped open. So <laughs> make sure you put a clip on them. All right. All right, and you're gonna have five. You're gonna have five of these straps if you're doing um, the sides the way the, the pattern calls for. If you're doing the two D rings on the side to like pinch the sides closed. Um, so your fifth strap, I just kind of already sewed um, down my edges, and we're gonna we're gonna cut this one for our D ring connector. So you should have five of these. Um, so that is what that looks like, and then I am going to take not a D ring. I'm gonna take my rectangle ring because this is for my handles. Okay. I'm going to put some tape on it so it stays in place when I'm putting it on my bag. And then fold it down two inches. About right there. And put another little piece of tape under there. Double check. Yep. So we just folded it down just like that. Okay. So those are our connectors. I'm going to just do that. And then for our side D rings, we've got our, I think it's 12, yep, our 12 inch strip right here, and we're gonna cut it into three 
inches each. All right. I'll just do that real quick. There's a couple ways you can do these side connectors. I saw Lauren's video and she does, um, instead of having it pinch in the middle, she does one long strap connector on the side and has a D-ring for a crossbody strap and her, her panel pieces don't go in. They just stay out and it's super cute. It's another great way to do it. Since I haven't made this bag before, I'm just gonna do it like the pattern suggests and see what I wanna tweak from there and what I wanna change or keep the same. Okay. All right, cut them just like that. <clears throat> oh yeah, I love rose gold, Gloria. I love the rose gold with the pink. I, that's usually what I use my rose gold for anytime I have pink. But I do love the antique gold too. That's my other favorite. Hi, Sonia. I hope I'm saying your names right. <laughs> I have a hard name and people mess it up all the time. Kasaya, people butcher it like crazy. So I apologize if I say anybody's name wrong. I don't mean to. <laughs> okay, so we've got our D-rings and I am just gonna baste them so they stay on there and then we can attach them to our side panels. <clears throat> Heather. Um, I get a lot of my hardware from um, Lauren Mormino, the Mormino.com. Um, she has gorgeous hardware. All of her stuff is just, I haven't gotten anything that I didn't like. And I also, sometimes when I want to order bulk, I do the Purse Depot. They don't have um, a ton of options, um, but they sometimes have the things that I need in bulk. But Seriously, Lauren Mormino's hardware is amazing. Thank you, Sonia. <laughs> all right, so I'm just basting these all. Yeah, Gloria, it's awesome. She, I don't know where she gets her stuff, but seriously, all of her hardware is gorgeous and it's heavy duty and you can tell it's not cheap. When I first started making bags, um, I made the mistake of getting stuff from Hobby Lobby. And this is before I had an industrial and I was just, you know, learning. And the difference between their hardware and like Lauren's hardware is insane. Like. There's no comparison. Theirs is so cheap and their hooks break. I've had people who had their hooks break. Okay, so I've got my D-rings there. I'm going to set those, well, no, let's go ahead and put those on. Um, how far down does it say? Okay, so one and a half from the top. And I, like I said, I'm just doing it like the pattern. I may change it later after I make this bag once and figure out what I do or don't like. But right now, I'm just following along here. So I marked a half, one and a half inches down. And I think it has the. Yeah, it has these kind of overlapping just a little bit on the sides. I'll probably do about a fourth. Yeah, a fourth of an inch over. Um, yeah, that looks good. And I think, I know on the pattern it suggests to make little tassels on clips to clip these together. I think that's super cute. So I think that's what I'm gonna do to clip my sides together. So 
this is what I've got here. And I'm just going to baste that on. Okay, just like that. <clears throat> now I'll do the next one. One and a half. All right. All right, now we'll do our strap connectors onto our main panels. <clears throat> Sorry, just a second. I always forget when I do videos to put my name tag on my bags. So I can't forget this time. Don't let me forget. All right, I'll put it right here so I remember. <laughs> All right, our main panels. I didn't talk about interfacing when I started. I am using vinyl and um, canvas. I had, this is from Hawthorne Threads. I love Hawthorne Threads. Um, you can get, they print some of their own fabric and you can get it on cotton, canvas, jersey mitt, whatever you want. And so this is canvas. And I love floral. It's just so pretty. Um, so I just did woven fuse and foam. And it's all fusible. I think it's going to make a pretty good bag. I don't know if I should have done Decaville Light too. I don't know. I'll find out. Okay. So the first panel we got here four inches, four inches from your edges. It is so pretty, huh? I love it. <clears throat> Not everybody's a floral person, but uh, I guess I am, I don't know. Okay, so we're going to measure, my ruler is exactly four inches. So that makes it easy. I'm just lining it up at the bottom here, make sure it's straight. And then I have this taped on here, so. Gonna take my tape off. You know what? I'm gonna put a tiny piece up here on top too. There we go. Just to make sure. All right, so all the way down at the bottom, and it goes all the way up. All right, and then do the other side. Did you say Hawthorne? Yes, Hawthorne, um, Michelle, Hawthorne Threads. I love Hawthorne Threads. They're not, it's not always cheap um, because they do print and make their fabric. There a lot of that, like this print, I think is one of their specialty ones. I think it's Indie Bloom, um, but it's a Hawthorne Threads made one, and I love it. I have so many that that one that bag right there. That's another um, Hawthorne Threads print. It's just 
I love their florals. They're so pretty. But it's it, it's like 20 bucks a yard. It's not cheap. Hi, Kay. Thank you. Um, Woven Fuse and Decaville. Yes. Uh, no, I am Gloria. I do use her interfacing and I'm not on her group. I didn't know she had a group on Facebook. I'll have to join. I didn't know that. But yes, I didn't understand what the big deal was about the difference in interfacing compared to just like Joanne's Pellin or whatever until I actually bought it and tried it. And now I don't make my bags with anything other than the Woven Fuse and the Decaville because I absolutely love it. It's such good quality. And with my heat press, it goes on so nice and easy and quick. Um, I'm making the large. I'm making, Amanda, I'm making the large satchel. So I just thought the small one looked super small. And I'm going on a trip this weekend. And I thought I could make myself a new bag for my trip. Okay, so I've got these taped on and I'm just gonna sew in a like a U shape. Gloria, thank you. Yeah, send me an invite to her group. I'd love to join. That would be awesome. Thank you. Okay. We're just gonna sew these on. I think the pattern tells you to sew them to stitch them before you put them on, but I just, I don't understand why, because you're gonna have to stitch them on anyway, so I'm doing it this way. And I'll also put rivets, I'll also put rivets on it. Okay. Oh, this is going to be so cute. See that? Cute. And then I'll put some, I'll put a rivet right there after I'm all done sewing them on. I've also seen it suggested to put a little slip pocket right here in between the two handles, which I was going to try, but... I decided not to since this is my first time making this pattern, but I think if I were to make it again, I would totally do a slip pocket in between these handles. I think that would be just a little bit extra. <laughs> I, I would love to have a class, Michelle. <laughs> You're funny. This is a class, right? Kind of. Oh, I need to go one more. All right. Um, Amanda, do I use the same stitch length for assembly and top stitching? No, I don't. I usually do my top stitch about a uh, four and a half to a five and my assembly about a three and a half to four. I make it smaller. I don't know if it makes a difference. I just feel it's more secure that way. Oh, come to my house and help you. Yeah, I could. I could do that, Michelle. Okay, so we've got our first, our first panel. I'm gonna go ahead and put my, um, my name plate on before I forget, because I tend to do that. All right, I'm just gonna put it on the front here. <clears throat> I don't have a rose gold name plate. I need to order rose gold, they didn't have them last time. I'm gonna have to do that. Hi, Joyce. Oh, thank you. I love this fabric too. Again, it's from Hawthorne, Hawthorne Threads. It's gorgeous floral. I've been wanting to do it forever. 
All right, I'm just putting my name tag on real quick, guys. Sorry. Yeah, once you start, Amanda, once you start using vinyl, it's so fun. You're not going to want to go back. <laughs> Ta da. All right. Okay. So we do our other panel now. I did have to switch to an industrial machine though once I uh, started using vinyl. My poor Bernina back there, she couldn't handle it. She's gone into retirement. <laughs> How much did I pay for my industrial, Nicole? Um, so I've had so many people ask about my machine. It's not a Juki. It's called a King Max. And um, it, I went, I live in Denver and it's Ralph's Industrial Sewing Machines. And I went there thinking I was going to buy a Juki because that seems to be the machine that everybody uses. And so he did have a ton of those, but he also had this King Max. Well, he had quite a few different ones, but he had this King Max right beside it. He says the only difference is this isn't labeled a Juki, like it's an off brand. And so I sat there and I, you know, kind of played around with both of them a lot. They seemed to so like they both felt fabulous and they both come with great warranties. And it was, I want to say it was 300 less than the Juki 1181. So I'm, I'm trying to think how much it was. So the Juki 1181 was 1400. So I think I paid 11, maybe I think I paid 11, 1100 for this. So I thought that was a pretty good deal. And yeah, if you search for it on the internet, it's not there. I don't know if it's just um, one they sell in stores. I didn't do a ton of research before. Like I researched Jukies. I had the, the like mindset that I was going to buy a Juki when I went into the store. So I didn't research anything else. So I kind of went on um, a limb getting this King Max, but I have absolutely loved it. And I have the store right there to help me. They said they'll come out if anything ever happens or if I have issues. And I haven't. I haven't had any issues. So I'm sorry. You can't get it online. I think you have to buy it in a store. But it's great if you can find one. I love it. It sews beautifully. Okay. I didn't realize it would be such a um, a hard to find machine when I bought it. Um, debating between a flat or oh, a cylinder. Um, I kind of wish I would have bought a cylinder sometimes when I'm making bags that are really hard to fit under here. I told my husband I'm gonna have to get a second machine, so. Sonia, I hope I say in your name right, Sonia. No, oh, no, who asked that? No, Nicole. Yeah, the cylinders are kind of awesome because you can just turn it into a flatbed if you need to. So I go looking back at it, I may, you know, if I knew then what I knew now, I think I might have gone for a cylinder that you could turn into a table. I think you could sew a lot more with it to be honest. I don't know if I'm saying it correctly. A cylinder, I, I just say cylinder. I know what you're talking about. I'm probably saying it wrong. I think you spelled it right. <laughs> but I do know what you're talking about. Okay. 
so you have a brother, a brother. Oh, that's great. That's great that you can sew everything on it. Yeah, my, I think I was killing my domestic machine. So I just figured I would make the plunge. two front panels all done yeah I mean flatbed attachment like why wouldn't you why wouldn't you buy that machine if you can turn it into a flatbed because then you got you have both machines I wish I would have done that I really do okay so we've got our handles on I've already done my base um for the bag I did um what did I do I did, so it's just vinyl, and I did a layer of Decaville Light and Decaville Heavy, and then I put purse feet on, and I just put tape over there just to cover them up and make sure they don't move. So my bottom is done. So let's, okay, so let's put it together. Uh, where's my sides? All right, so this, it wants you to stop three eighths from the bottom because it's having you box it out. So don't forget to mark it three eighths of the way down here. I find if I don't mark my pieces, then I forget. All right. Okay, side panels first. Kind of has a curve to it. Oh, I'm excited for this bag. All right. <clears throat> Make sure I'm doing this right. Sorry, this is my first time putting this together, so I'm just reading instructions, making sure I'm I'm doing everything. That's my seam allowance. <clears throat> Sorry, I don't know if it told me a seam allowance at the beginning. <laughs> Three eighths, okay. All right. Oh, good, I'm glad. Yeah, I've heard from a <clears throat> couple people that they wanted to make this one, so. I know it always helps to see it being made first. I'm going to just double over my connectors here on the side just to give it a little bit of extra security there. Oh shoot, I forgot to do my rivets. I need to do my rivets real quick. All right, let me do my rivets. Sorry about that. All right, let's do this real quick. All right. I've seen some people have one of these for making holes with and one of them for setting the rivets. I think I might invest in that because my Leather punching tool doesn't always get to where I need to punch. Kind of like here, it's not the easiest. It's doable, 
but it's not the easiest. All right. I'm glad I just remembered this. <laughs> I would be sad if I forgot. I'm just eyeballing, trying to get it even. And no rivets on the sides because they have to come in. Yeah, me too, Sonia. <laughs> Okay, Gloria, you sent it to me in the group. Sent you the group invite and messenger. Okay, I'll check my messenger. Thank you. I appreciate it. There's so many different groups you can join. I never know which ones. Tempted to start my own group. I think I might start a group. I don't know. That's a new thing. We'll see. Okay. I just, for those of you wondering, I just got this leather punch off of Amazon. It was like 10, 12 bucks. Super cheap. And I got this off of Amazon as well. And uh, it comes for setting grommets. And you have to buy the, the rivet um, attachment separately. And you can also get a bunch of punches and things to, for making wallets. And it's pretty convenient. Deborah, love the floral. I should start a group. Okay. <laughs> I'll look into how to do that. Oh, I just love, I just love rivets. I just want to like rivet all the way down. That'd be actually pretty cute. <laughs> all right. All right, that one. I'm trying to think if there's any other part. I think that's it on this bag for the rivets. Just this one. <clears throat> Just the handles. It's kind of a cute springy bag. Makes me want warm weather. It's so cold here. It's been snowing nonstop for like two weeks. We've had snow days and late start days and bleh. I don't know about that. Okay. I have my rivets on. I'm gonna continue sewing on my side panels. All right. Remember to stop. Three eighths from the bottom when you do your side panels. Because you will not want to go back and unstitch all that. Okay. There we go. Hi, Carol. Thanks for joining us. I'm just excited that anybody wants to watch this. <laughs> it's always so nervous starting something. You just never know. Never know how it's going to go. <laughs> Okay. Um, 
I think it is kind of an easy bag to make, but um, I think a lot of the, oh no, this isn't a swoon. This is a blue collar. I have bought quite a few of these patterns from um, this designer and I don't know if I've made any of them yet. So, but this pattern seems pretty awesome and easy to put together. I don't know if I should top stitch that or not. No, I don't think so. Okay, I'm not top stitching. All right, and then you sew on the next one. Thank you. I love the colors on this bag too. I'm super excited. I'm going to see my sister this weekend in um, Vegas. She lives in Vegas. And I'm excited to take it with me as my purse. <clears throat> All right. Uh, where do I get my vinyls? I... Nicole, where do I get my vinyls? Um, I This pink vinyl is from, I say lots of things wrong. My Punk Broidery, I think is how it said. I can put the link down below for it. She has super cute colors and different styles. I just ordered a big amount from her I'm excited to get. I think I'll do a video when I get the package to show you all um, what vinyls I get. I got a rose gold one. I'm super excited to see. Um, and then I do actually order a lot of my vinyls from fabric.com. They come on big rolls and it's like $6.99 a yard for them. It's a great deal. And the more yards you get with fabric.com, the cheaper the price is. And I've only gotten a couple of vinyls from them that I couldn't use, but if you get the marine and their faux leather vinyl, it's actually pretty nice. So those are probably my two most common places I get my vinyl from. Okay. Next piece. Amanda, I like watching your today. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you. <clears throat> All right. I suppose I probably don't have to clip, but I just want to make sure it's on there. I'm going to put my hair up real quick. Just a minute. It's driving me a little crazy. Sorry. <laughs> Joanne's. Yeah. I have tried Joann's. I do actually, I have gotten a few things from there too. They do have some great sales sometimes. I find stuff in the clearance section. That works pretty well too. A little bit of everywhere, I think. I'm always out on the hunt for fabrics and vinyls. I asked my sister if there's any good uh, textile or fabric stores in Las Vegas. So I might go hunting there and see what they have. If anybody knows of anything, let me know. Okay, don't forget to stop at your three-eighths. Uh-oh. I think I just ran out of bobbin. Oh, I just did. Okay, just a minute. <clears throat> Change my bobbin. I'm glad I wasn't in the middle of a top stitch. All right. Shoot. It's all mixed up. Just a minute. Come on. There we go. Germany. Hi. That's crazy, all the way from Germany. Thanks for joining. All right. All right, let me 
me put my other one on to wind so I don't run out again. The nice thing about this machine is it has a bobbin winder that goes while you sew. I don't know if that's normal for most machines. It's kind of cool. There we go. Thank you. Um, Dagmar, is that how you say it? I hope I'm saying it right. Thank you so much. Have you always sewn on industrial? No, I haven't. Um, I just bought this industrial. Mm, I don't know. Maybe six months ago when I knew that this was what I love to do and I wanted to do something more with it. And I love it. <clears throat> Oh, <laughs> so yeah, you're at your lunch. Thanks for joining. I appreciate it. Okay, I got my bottom on. And I mean my sides, not my bottom. I'm going to put the bottom on. And I, earlier I did um, little center clips in my main panels. And I do it on my, yep, yeah, and I did it on my bottom so I can line it up easy. <clears throat> yeah, so we're going to sew our long edges first and then we're going to sew the the side panel. So match your, your center clips up. And when you're doing this too, you stop at the three eighths mark. Am I right? Yep. Let me mark my panel real quick. I have so many rulers everywhere. I always forget where I put them all. Okay. I'm going to mark this. So I remember to stop. You have to give yourself that three eighths to um, do the sides. Okay. There we go. Okay, so start and stop at that three eighths mark. You kind of got to pull this other stuff out of the way here because you don't want to sew onto your side panel. Do the other side. Oh my gosh, it's gonna be so cute. Can you guys see what I'm doing okay? Hopefully this is, the setup is okay. <clears throat> I never know being able to see what I'm doing. All right, go ahead and do the other side. All right, get it in there. Okay. Perfect to me. Oh, good. How big is the finished bag, Carol? Um, I don't know. I've never done it. This is my first time. So <laughs> when we're done, we can measure it and I will let you know. Probably has measurements on the pattern of the finished bag, I'm guessing. Right now, I mean, it's a pretty good size. I would say it's a handbag, a good, you know, travel handbag purse. 
probably about the size that I usually carry, actually. All right, so we got our long edges. We're going to take our corners, and because we have that room right there, you kind of just flatten them out like that and box them up and sew those up. I actually think this style, this bottom of bag, I like doing this um, as opposed to ones where you have to fit it and sew it around. I think this assembly type is way easier than the other. I usually have to staple all the way around the other bags and it's kind of a pain. <clears throat> The Netherlands, hello. Thanks for joining. We got Germany and Netherlands. It's crazy, it's crazy. Okay, so sew these side panels up. Make sure you don't leave a hole because you kinda, like where your two corners meet, make sure that you're sewing that up. You don't want a hole in the bottom of your bag. The large one is 14 wide and 10 high and five deep. Thank you, Deborah. It's a good size. Okay, yay, we have our outside done. Trim seam allowances. Mm, I don't wanna, I don't really wanna trim by my connectors though. I like to leave the little extra um, support there. So, just trim it all down where you can. Double check all your corners. Make sure you don't have any gaps where you met the two seams there. <clears throat> so many people from different places. It's really cool. Seam allowance isn't very big to begin with, so. All right. Trim my base, sorry. It's kind of a boring part here. It does make a difference on how your bag all fits together though when you trim it down. It just lays nicer. <clears throat> oh, what's that? You have to join now. I just posted your live video. <laughs> okay. Thanks, Gloria. I definitely will join. Yes, I will for sure. That's very awesome of you. Thank you. Okay. Well, one more side here. All right, I always make a mess. There we go. All right, so now we turn it around and we're gonna put our zipper on it. <clears throat> Where am I? Um, Dagmar, I am in the States, in the United States. I am in Denver, Colorado. Parker, it's a suburb. Pretty cool. Okay. Got my corners. Ooh. Guys, that's pretty. Okay, that's our outside. 
All right. So let's get our zipper here. Actually, so I want this side to be my front. It's got my tag on it. <clears throat> oh, my pattern scroll. Sorry, just a minute. Come on. All right. So <laughs> take your. Yep. Okay. So we have our zipper that we did earlier. I am going to unzip it. Remember, I sewed the end of my zipper so it won't come completely off. But I want my start of my zipper here. Yeah, so like this. All right, so I'm taking my zipper face down. I'm going to match my, I notched my center. And I have my center of my main panel because I notched it earlier. And I'm just going to clip that on. And it's kind of a rounded top, so make sure you go with that curve. Oh, that fits perfect in between, okay. The bobbin weave, hi. Your mother-in-law wants a new bigger bag and I was thinking about making her the snowdrop, awesome. It's a great size. <clears throat> Loretta, I am making, thank you. I am making the Snowdrop Satchel by Blue Kala. I don't know if I'm saying that right, guys. Is it Kala or Kala? I don't know. Um, okay. Yeah, it is a good size. It's the large version of this. Let me make sure I'm doing this right. Yep, yep, yep. Okay. So we have our recess panel on there. I'm going to go ahead and baste that on this side. And it's kind of a curved edge. So this is where the cylinder machine, I know I'm saying that wrong. It's got a bigger name. This is where the cylinder arm will come in handy. <clears throat> Thank you. I love this fabric too. I've um, told everybody else it's from Hawthorne Threads. I think it's Indie Bloom is the um, name of it. And I uh, have it in printed in canvas. I got it in the canvas. Okay, Based that on there. So, bye. Okay, so here, here's what we have, right? So what we gotta do is we gotta take it and we have to flip it that way. And your zipper will kind of flip like that, because then I'll show you when we have it all together. So now you're pinning it on this side. I hope that made sense. Hawthorne ships so fast, yeah. Like I ordered this and with by the end of the week I had it. They Their shipping is amazing. Do I prefer canvas? Yes, I do prefer canvas, especially if I'm doing something printed like this. I just feel like it's, makes a sturdier, heavier, better bag. I rarely use quilted cotton for the outsides of my bags. I'll use it for the inside, but for the outside, I prefer canvas or um, vinyl. <clears throat> yeah. Okay, so I have it clipped on this end. Because when we when we fold it back in now, this will be the right way around. So make sure you flip it. Okay, I'm gonna baste that. 
<clears throat> Does it save on interfacing? I think so because you're starting with um, a thicker, a thicker. If I if this was just cotton, I definitely would have done woven fuse, Decaville light, and foam. But because it's the canvas, you you don't have to do both woven fuse and Decaville. It's Decoville. It's just one or the other. I think you could do both, but it would be a pretty, I mean, a pretty stiff outside if you did both. All right, I'm just basting this one on. Put it all together, flip this back in. Ta -da! It worked. Okay. Um, yeah, so that's our outside, guys. Let's work on our inside. All right, so I am doing a zipper pocket and a slip pocket on my inside. I am using waterproof canvas. That Ottertex waterproof canvas, I don't interface it with anything because it's fabulous. Um, yeah, and we're just going to go, I'm doing um, the same, I'm doing the zipper the exact way, like the measurements that the pattern gives you. And I'm leaving it open. I'm going to leave my pocket open. And I'm also going to leave the bottom of my bag open because I want to pull my bag through my lining and then I'm going to reach through my pocket and pull my lining through the pocket, sew it up and then sew up the pocket. It just gives it a better seam on the inside of your bag, I feel like. So, okay, let's do our zipper. Where's the pen? There it is. I throw everything everywhere. Okay. <clears throat> I do have a template for zippers, but I find I don't use it as much as I thought I would. I just use my ruler. All right. Mark my centers. I just fold it and crease it. It gives it a good, good way to tell where you're at. Mm, about right there looks good. Where's my pen cushion? Sorry. There it is. All right, so that's what we got. I already sewed up, or not sewed, ironed up my bottom for where I'm gonna sew my pocket close, but there's my um, zipper outline. So I'm gonna go ahead and sew that. Open. 
I love this. This is just a Fiskars. I'm not quite sure what the correct term is for it. It's just a, a blade. I use it a lot. I use it for all my zippers. It comes in handy a lot when I'm sewing. I think I need a new blade. My blade's kind of dull. Okay. Just cut through it like that and pull it through. And I'm just going to give it a good finger press. I'm not going to iron it because I've got the waterproof canvas. So I don't want to put heat on it. Okay, just like that. <clears throat> Sorry, I have a stitch right here that I need to take out. There it goes. All right. And then I got my zipper all prepped and ready right here. And some double sided tape. Stick that on there as best you can. Okay. Sometimes it gives me more trouble than others. My goodness. Okay. There we go. All right. Just gonna sew that in there. I don't like how this is laying. Sorry, just a minute. There we go. zipper on. I'm going to trim down my side here real quick. So it goes over my pocket just a little bit. I don't want it poking into my fabric. I just melt the ends of my zipper so it doesn't fray. Okay. Like that. 
And then we're gonna put the other side on. And so everything together except the bottom because you wanna leave that open for the end, okay? Hello, Leadville, Colorado. Hey, you're not far from me, Jennifer. I'm in Parker. Pink with the gray. I love pink and gray. It's my favorite. I do a lot of pink and gray. Um, uh, Gloria, you said you love Lauren's hardware. Yes, I am on her Facebook group for sure. I'm already on that one. <laughs> I'm on about three or four different ones. I just didn't know about Barb's interfacing one. Okay, so put your pocket on there. go over where my zipper is a couple times because I just want to make sure that's secure right there. Okay. Here's our zipper pocket. And I am just going to trim. I have too many different kinds of scissors. So I've got like Three or four, and none of them are usually the one I want to use. Okay, I'm just going to trim right down here a little bit. It helps when I sew it shut. Okay. Bye, Sonia. Thanks for, thanks for joining us. All right, there's my zipper pocket. I already made up my slip pocket, and I just put a... Um, a one inch strip of vinyl over the top to give it just a little bit extra. I think it's cute. Um, so I'm just gonna center those two up. Bye, thank you for joining. Have a good day at work. All right. Probably could have made my slip pocket bigger. I just wasn't sure. So I think it's like 10 and a half by six and a half is what I made it. You could go bigger. You could probably go all the way to the edges. And that'd be nice. I probably should have done that. That's okay. That's what happens. You sew and you learn how you like certain stuff. All right. So I'm just going to baste this on, well not baste, but sew it on. I've already made the pocket part. And I think, yeah, I think I'm going to separate it into two pockets. Let me do that real quick. <clears throat> okay. I'm just putting a line down the middle to separate it so I know where to sew. All right, so when I do uh, slip pockets where I'm separating, I just start at one end, go down, come up, over, and then finish it off. So that's what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna go over my corner pieces a couple times up here, just so I, um, give it extra support. And on my corners down here. Thank you. 
Easy. Panels done. Okay. That's it. Got my hope that's big enough for my phone. Let me see. Oh, perfect. Perfect phone size. That's what I was hoping. Okay. I think now we put, yep, now we put our inside together just like we did our outside, except I think we're using a half inch, are we doing a half inch seam allowance? It doesn't say, do not leave, oh. Yeah, we saw the bottom part. The bottom actual edge is different because there's not a separate piece. Um, but the sides we sew. The sides we sew all the way down to this little notch. Yep. Let's do it. Okay. Here we go. Yep, so it's gonna go over, I'll show you. I will show you. See our bottom piece here is notched out a little bit so we can do our bottom. So your side piece is gonna go over a little bit and that's okay. Yep. Okay. Let's do that. And then get your next one and do the same thing. <laughs> there we go. Now this bag is going together super awesome. It's a, like the instructions are great. I'm not having any issues with understanding what they're talking about, how to put it together. It's a great pattern. I like it so far. And do the next side. Same thing. And then we'll do the bottom. Oh, I think we're almost done. Yay. Okay. Done there. Is this, yes, the bobbin weave. This is my first snowdrop. Yep. I've been wanting to do it for a while and some people were asking to see it sewn. So it's going together awesome. Uh, do you think I can sew this bag on a domestic machine? Um, I, I'm, it all depends on your domestic. Some people have domestics that can sew vinyl great and others don't. So I'm not sure. I think you just have to kind of try it and see. Um, Gloria, the trailblazer looks great. Oh, <laughs> thank you. That was a special. I love the trailblazer. If you guys haven't done that one yet. Oh my gosh. 
that's my that's my fourth one I've made and it's kind of awesome. It's a great pattern. I really love it. <clears throat> and um, it is, yeah, so it is made with a canvas from the floral canvas from Hawthorne Threads. And it's got faux leather from fabric.com. And it's got a cute, like, what did, I, what did I put on the inside of that? I think, yeah, and it's a waterproof canvas on the inside. Um, yeah, I have a tutorial on how to sew the trailblazer. So check it out. Um, so our bottom, we're just sewing like that. I want you to sew it at a half inch seam allowance, a little bit bigger. So it fits in. I am leaving my bottom open. So I'm just sewing like this much on each side and I'm going to leave it open to pull our bag through because I feel like the pocket is not big enough to pull it through. Where did I, Nicole, where did I get my waterproof canvas? I ordered this from fabric.com. They have quite a bit of different colors of the Ottertex um, waterproof canvas, and it comes in nice big rolls. So I don't know of other places that have it. That's where I've been, that's where I've been getting mine, and I like it a lot. All right, so I'm leaving a big old gap. The bigger, the better to pull it through. Okay. Oh, did I do, oh, I didn't do a big seam allowance. Just a minute. I need to redo that one. Half inch. Okay. all my millions of threads and then we're going to box out the corners yeah yep box out the corners okay so there's my bottom I left a big hole and then I have my corners now There we go. <clears throat> okay. So I don't know if I did this right or wrong. It seems weird. I don't know what I did wrong there. Um, bottom of the bag, side panel. The bottom seam will be in the middle of the side panel. Okay, well, let's do it. I don't know what I did. Oh, maybe that's right. Like that, maybe. I don't know, guys. This seems odd. I think I followed the instructions. <laughs> Luckily, it's just the bottom of the bag on the inside. <gasps> All right, let's try that. <laughs> that seems odd. Maybe that's right. All right, that works. All right, so box out your corners as best you can. Okay.
Oh, I think that's what I was supposed to do. I get it now. But it doesn't show. I have like, I have material hanging over. This will prevent lining from bunching in the bottom. Hmm. Well, I'm going to do it like that. Maybe I'll learn later that I did it wrong, but that seems right. <clears throat> okay. Okay, I think now we put it together, yay! Okay, put it together, place your exterior shell into your lining. Right sides together, here we go. Let's see, which do I want? This way, I think. Okay, here we go. Make sure that your, your zipper ends are out of the way. You don't want those to get caught when you're sewing. Okay, just like that. Start pinning it around or clipping. I always say pin, sorry. Just to have it, I mean clip. And we're almost done. Okay. In there more. All right, I'm trying to match up my edges first here. Matching up my four edges. And then I'll do my... That's cute how it has a curve. I like that curved top there. Right. Here we go. I get excited at the end of finishing the bag. <laughs> so, so silly, but it makes me happy to see what I've done. Okay. Let me double check I'm doing this right. Yup. Okay. Here we go. I'm gonna do, it doesn't, I'm guessing it's a 3 8 seam allowance. It doesn't specifying a certain step, but the rest of the pattern is that way. So that's what I'm gonna do. All right. I don't know which way, maybe this way. <clears throat> yeah, my favorite part is turning the bags to see the finished product. Yeah, I, I love turning the bag. It's a pain in the butt and it's so exciting all at the same time. All right.
Make sure you keep that curve in there as you sew. Almost there. All right. Now the pattern suggests that you um, clip this curve where your zipper is. I've never done it before, so I'm going to do as the pattern suggests. And I'm just gonna give little clips here, just so the turn, so the curve can curve. So it lays nicely. It's not the easiest to clip, because I've got vinyl in there. I'm not doing big ones, just little snips. My hands get so tired after making a bag. By the end, I've had to have my husband come down and help turn the bag before because my hands were so tired by the end. Uh. All right, so I'm just doing, I don't know if you can see, just tiny little snips. See that? Oh, there. Just so hopefully it lays better. I think hopefully I'm doing this right. Yeah, they have like notches taken out of there, but I'm just doing little snips. I think it'll work. I think it'll work good like this too. Hopefully. I don't know if this is needed. If somebody's made this bag before and doesn't think that this is needed, please tell me. <laughs> But for now, this is what we're doing. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Can we turn it? We can turn it. Okay. I left the bottom open of my lining. I'm pulling it through my lining. to open my zipper <clears throat> for rag quilts. Does that make it, oh, what's, what's that called? I have scissors like that, but they're so hard to use. They don't go through fabric very easily. Uh, pinking shears, pinking shears. That's what those are called, right? My pinking shears are crap. So maybe I need a better pair. Okay, so <laughs> did I just close wide open? Okay. I have a hole in my lining. I have a hole in my pocket. I'm going to grab my lining through my pocket. Okay. And I'm going to sew up my lining and then I'm going to sew my pocket up. 
<clears throat> rag snips are very a very short scissor. It's a special scissor. Maybe I'll have to try those. I don't have many bags where I have to do that too, so I don't even know if it was needed for this, so we'll see. Okay. Put your lining out. And we're going to sew that shut. Wow, it is the best for little snips like that. Then I'll have to try those. I'll have to invest in a pair. All right. Okay, sew that shut. Gonna trim this just a tiny bit down. Okay, stick that back through your pocket. And then sew your pocket shut. done. I think all we have to do is top stitch and put on the handles. Okay, put your pocket in. Put your lining in. That's nicely. I'm going to put our pocket in a little bit more. Yay! See, we're all sewn up there. And then all left, all that is left to do is top stitch. Yeah, we did it. Sweet. All right. I'm done. I'm just finger pressing my bag here. I like the weight. It's nice and light. It doesn't feel too heavy. It doesn't have too much, you know, interfacing and extras. It's an awesome size. Thank you. Beautiful bag. I really am in love with this fabric combination. That's kind of awesome. All right. All right. Let's top stitch this sucker up. You never know where to start. Starting on the back corner with my top stitching. Mm. 
Cheryl. Super cute. Yeah, the end result. It is, this is kind of an awesome pattern, guys. I'm kind of loving it. I might be making a lot more of these. It's a great size of bag, too. I don't know how much smaller the, the small version of this is, but this large one would be my choice for carrying around. I'm not I'm not a small bag person unless I'm just like going out on a date or with the girls or something. That's the only time I carry a smaller bag. So I usually carry a Lola. I have a Lola that I like to use. I feel like it's a good size. I get nervous. My machine tears the vinyl and bumps. All right. The joys of a walking foot. <clears throat> what machine do I use? <laughs> I talked about this at the beginning. It's not a Juki. It's called a King Max. King Max. I was going to buy a Juki. Went into an industrial sewing store here in Denver. This was by the Jukies. It's pretty much like the off-brand Juki. Has all the same. He says all the parts are exactly the same. Has the same exact parts. It just doesn't have the Juki name. And it was about $300 less. So I figured I would take a shot and I have loved it. I know you can't find it online. I don't know if it's just a storefront uh, machine, but I love mine. Hi, Starfish. Thanks for tuning in. We're at the very end, stitching this, top stitching this bag up. You're gonna make this one for sister, yeah, oh my gosh. This would be such a cute bag to give someone for their birthday, it's a good one. Oh, sorry, it's taking me a minute to top stitch. Almost there. This is probably my least favorite thing to do, guys. Top stitching these bags. But it's necessary. Marlene. Love your videos. We'll be making a pearl wallet by soon. Oh, um, pearl wallet. I've never made the pearl. I haven't ventured much into pearl wallets. I have the pattern for the pearl. I have the pattern for the Maryland by Lynn's Handmade. And those are both ones I want to try. So yeah, maybe I'll, maybe I'll try that one next. Yeah, seriously, this is another reason for a cylinder machine. This would be a dream. This would be so much easier if I didn't have a flatbed. Yep. And that would be why I would want it. All right. Oh, 
all done. Oh, my thread is caught. Okay. At the very end, my thread gets caught. I'm just going to singe those at the top there. Hi. I just need to put a zipper stop on my handles. Supposed to stay up like that. Yeah, it's cute. Or is it supposed to go down? No, it's supposed to stay up, I think. Um, so I do have my crossbody strap made. So I think it's supposed to go in like this. Yeah. Like I said, a tassel clip would be super cute there too. And like that. And then I'll have to make my handles to go on. And that'll be that. I'll just clip them on just to show real quick. I still have to make the other one. Okay. Awesome. I don't know how I feel about the gray with it. I may change it to pink. I just thought it would be cute to do something different. But that's our bag. Bottom. Awesome. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. I appreciate you spending time with me. And hopefully this helps you figure out how to make this pattern. Super cute pattern easy to put together. The instructions are awesome. So good luck, everybody. And I hope you guys have a good day. Thanks for tuning in. Bye.